This is Dr. Mark Markey, a professor of aerospace engineering and mechanics at the University of Alabama. I want to make this video specifically for my distance education AEM 250 mechanics and materials students for the fall 2018 semester. If there's no changes, I may use this uh, for other semesters, but uh, specifically for fall 2018. Now, there's a couple ways to get to our Blackboard shell for this course. The purpose of this video is to kind of go through the shell and uh, make sure that you understand how to access the materials and so forth. So this is my Bama. This is the university's portal. There may be other ways to get to the Blackboard shell for this course, but for me, I have these semesters over here. You probably don't have as many. And uh, I have this course, EEM 250-920. If I click on that, that will bring up the Blackboard shell. Okay, so here that is right here. Now, right now, this is what's called the instructor view for the course. So I'm going to click on this, go to student view, so I can see what, what you would see. All right, so here's the uh, initial page, and you see this kind of unusual structure. These are columns that are inside the General Motors Renaissance Center in downtown uh, Detroit. And uh, there are many of these concrete columns, uh, very, uh, very large in diameter. And so one of the things that we'll talk about in this course is compression and uh, column buckling. I don't think we have to worry about those columns buckling unless there's an issue. But here we have uh, some very large diameter columns in compression. All right, so if we scroll down a little bit, uh, you, there's a welcome video. That's me just uh, saying welcome to the course and giving you a little bit of background about me. Here's the course schedule uh, in PDF form. So let's click on that and see what that looks like. So my browser puts it uh, in a, a file over here and uh, I'll bring that up. And so August 22nd, uh, that is today. Okay, so just go through the introduction module and, uh, and then it also has module one, assignment one. The lecture is introduction and normal stress. These are the chapters out of our book and uh, these are the problems that are due. Okay, so now, bear with me here. This is a new development. It says all activities are due by 11.59 p.m. Central Time on the date indicated. Um, I don't necessarily mean that to be so strict. Um, I will adjust the dates as we go through. I, I know that as a distance education student, you're working, you're on work assignments, you're traveling. You may not be able to get these done. Uh, this very day of the first day of class. So bear with me as I make some adjustments to the date. Uh, typically, I'd like to give one week uh, for you to work on these problems. So they're assigned today, August 22nd. But these problems would be due one week from this date. Same for tests. We have tests that are assigned, and uh, then those um, tests are due and need to be completed within one week of the assigned date. And we'll go over that as well. Okay. So uh, read the syllabus and the course policies uh, by clicking on the course menu. So over here on this left-hand bar over here, here's the course homepage, here's the syllabus. Now this is all the formal um, information about the course. Here's my contact information, you click on that. Here's the prerequisites, required text. Um, course objectives, other course materials, all this kind of good stuff, grading policies, homework, uh, regular schedule exams, final exams, anticipate we'll have a grader available, but if not, we'll make some adjustments. Uh, exams and assignments, 90 minute exams, three of them, there's a two and a half hour final. And for these exams, these exams will need to be proctored exams. There are instructions on obtaining a proctor uh, for this course. Attendance policy, some ex expectations from prerequisites for the courses. AEM 201, statics is a prerequisite. Statics is a frequently taught course across the country. You may not have taken this from the University of Alabama, but you do need to be able to draw proper free body diagrams. And uh, proper free body diagram is a simple sketch of the structure that is freed from its supports and shows the loads and reactions applied to the body. Supports must not be drawn on the free body diagram but are instead replaced with idealized reactions that the supports impart to the structure. Once you be able to find support reactions and internal forces for simple stress, truss structures, bars and beams, and axial torsional bending and combined loading 
uh, equivalent static forces and so forth. We'll do lots of examples. Um, but if you haven't taken your statics class, if it's been a while since you've taken it, you may want to brush up on the statics or pay particular pr attention to the problems that I work that involve the statics. And, and really, almost every single problem in this class will start off with a statics problem. We'll do a little bit of calculus in this class. We'll do basic derivatives and integrals. Later on, we'll do some differential equations. Differential equations is not a prerequisite to this class. You will not be responsible for solving differential equations on any exams. But we do need to use one at the very end for um, a derivation. Okay. There's academic honor code. Uh, do not copy off of CHAG, other students. Uh, if you find a solution manual somewhere, don't copy off of it and all these different things. Uh, here's the exam procedures. Turn off your cell phone during the exam. Uh, electronic communications. I will send out emails to your university email account. That's the only one I know of, and uh, that's the one that I will use. We do have a statement on academic misconduct, disability accommodations, severe weather protocol, pregnant student accommodations, religious health services, and the UA Act statement. You can click on those various links. Uh, basically, with the severe weather protocol, uh, you may be anywhere in the country. We even have students that are international. You, uh, if it's not safe to travel somewhere to take your exam or something like that, send me an email and uh, we can talk about that and make other arrangements for your examination. Okay, so basically, if uh, stay safe if there's severe weather in your area. If you follow that rule, then uh, then everything will be good. So let's see, let me close this one out. Uh, there's this thing called Red Shelf. Okay, in Red Shelf is where you will have access to your electronic copy of your textbook. Uh, it's around $50 as of the time of this recording of this video. Um, you do not have to use the electronic version of this book. If you already have a copy of the book or if you prefer, prefer a hard copy, you can opt out and you will not be charged for that book. I'm not going to click on this link because it won't take me anywhere because I'm not enrolled as a student in this class. I'm just looking at the student view. Okay, these various learning modules, see this is not a link, but these are the different links that correspond to these modules as listed over here on the left-hand side. And they involve our introduction, uh, axial deformation, torsion, and so forth. And after certain modules, there will be exams. So there's going to be an exam after module one. There'll be an exam after module four. And there'll be an exam after module five, six, and seven. And then buckling and design topics will be what we talk about just before the final exam. Here's exam proctoring information. If you have questions about proctors, I can try to help. But the best contact for that will be through distance education. Uh, let's see if we click on this, what happens? This is mail. Okay, these are course messages. You can send that to me. Now, I will caution you that I don't always get notified if there's a mail sent here. So feel free to use my embarky at eng.ua.edu email address. Okay, let's uh, we'll take a look at additional practice problems later, but let's take a look at uh, one of these modules. Uh, introduction that we have right here. Okay. So stress, strain, and design. So again, here's a, uh, a picture. Uh, this is a, a test that I conducted on a piece of steel. That's this glowing orange object right here. And this is in what's called an induction coil. This is a high temperature test of steel. I was measuring the stress strain curve. So that's one of the first things that we'll talk about in class is what is stress and what is strain. So here we have our learning objectives. Here's the readings. Now, let's see, it says click for more options. I'm not sure what this will do. It doesn't really uh, do a whole lot for me here. Uh, but then we have video. So here's the introduction to normal stress lecture video. Okay, it's just about one hour long. And then uh, what I've also done is I have uh, the notes that I have. Let's click on one of these and I'll, I'll see if we can get this to pop up for a second. So you're going into this and uh, you'll see, you don't see me, but what this is, is I made these on a computer. 
where I typed on a tablet or, or wrote on a tablet. And uh, these are all my words here. And you can speed this up, you can slow it down, you can pause it, you can go back. Uh, but this will have everything in the lecture one. Now, these are the same things I talk about to students in my on campus section, but these have um, the ability also to show in some, throw in some pictures and do some things like that. Um, so the first lecture is on stress. Now, just below that, if you click on this link for lecture one notes PDF, okay, again, it, my browser puts it over here. This is a PDF file that has all the pages that are in there. And so you don't necessarily have to take your own notes. You may want to do that just for purposes of understanding the material, and I, and I would encourage you to do that. But if you miss something, you can print these out, and these are yours that uh, you can have. Now, every one of my videos has uh, should have a PDF copy of these lecture notes. And then we get into lecture two and, and everything. Now, there are some lectures in which there are demonstrations. So let's see, here's a rubber band being stretched demo. Let's click on that. Some of my lectures, some of my lectures, I couldn't really uh, do this because I didn't have a camera in front of me. But I went into a studio and I was able to record some demonstration lectures. And so there's a rubber band being stretched, and the, the idea is you see these, these dots on the rubber band. We can measure the strain, the change in length over the initial length between these dots. Okay, now, some of the terms you won't know about until you go through the lecture, but, um, but we'll get to all of those. And a rubber band is really not that much different than a piece of steel as far as the basic concepts of stress and strain are concerned. Okay, so, so there's not a, a, a demo on every single one, but uh, there are demos on, on several of these. Okay, so here we have assignment number one. Okay, um, and if you click on assignment number one, now this drop down uh, in my browser, maybe you don't see it in your browser, but I don't think that really does anything. But if you click on this assignment number one, this goes to how to upload the assignment. Okay, now remember the assignments are over here on the uh, the course schedule. Okay, the course schedule tells you what problems to turn in, and here's the due date. Again, I'm going to change the due date, so I'm going to just bear with me on that. Okay, and out of ten points possible. Now, in addition to having these problems that you will work, if you need help with these problems, I have already recorded some of the solutions to these problems. Now, in order for you to get the most out of this course, you should really try to work these problems on your own first. These solutions here are just uh, extra help when you need it. So if I click on this one, this is help for problem 2.2-6. Okay, and so here it is. It's pasted from the ebook what that particular problem is. And then I go through and I show you exactly how to work the problem using all the things that I would look for when I grade an exam. Free body diagrams, uh, proper units, proper amount of significant digits, and so forth. And most of these are usually five to ten minutes long. There are some more involved problems later on in the semester, but most of these at the beginning are fairly straightforward. Okay, so there's, there's help there when you need it. Now, not every problem have I worked. Uh, there are also, uh, we'll look at my personal website where I have some just answers to odd number problems from the textbook. Um, but if you would like to ask me to work another problem, I will work another problem and develop a new video, and we will find a place to post that. Um, so let's see here. I don't see, I don't see integrity on this side, uh, but what I will try to do is I will try to add a section over on the left hand side that may be um, may not show up today. I'll try to add a section where you can look at all the new videos that I would make during the semester as students ask for help. Okay, so here we have this uh, due date. So you attach the file, you browse your computer. I want you to upload a PDF. JPEG files, JPG files from cameras, 
don't really work very well when we try to grade them. So it's really important that somehow your work gets converted into a PDF. Now there's a few ways to do this. You can use a scanner at work. A lot of photocopiers these days uh, have built-in scanners and they can email them to you and then you can upload it. Um, but uh, something I have at home, and, and I'll, I think you'll see these are not terribly expensive, is I have at home one of these multifunction scanners. So here's one that's about $150. It's less than the hard copy of the textbook. And what this will do is this sheet feeds in and it scans the work. Now you can also use things um, um, that are not like that. You can take pictures and convert those into PDF. And there are ways to do that. And there's some instructions on here for that. Um, but uh, you may find that it's very helpful for your subsequent classes to have that kind of scan to PDF capability. All right. All right, so that's how to do that. Uh, let's see, additional practice problems. Okay, so now I've taught this class for many semesters and I changed the homework problems up. So I have worked many problems besides the ones that are associated with your homework problems. Okay, so if you need some extra practice, what you can do is you can try to work these problems and then watch the solution videos for these problems. If you notice, we have a lot in the beginning. We don't have quite as many toward the end. It's kind of the nature of the course and the sections that are covered in those particular chapters. But um, uh, we have these here that are available as well. Okay. Now over here, uh, this should be a portal. I don't think it'll say anything. Uh, here, but here is uh, your assignments, and there should be a uh, score here when we get a grader. Now, I want to tell you that uh, today, the first day of class, I don't have a grader assigned to this class yet, but I'm working on that, so, so bear with us. The idea is we'll get some feedback to you well before your first exam. Okay, now, I want to show you my personal website. And the distance education folks prefer that I have everything through my Bama. And for the most part, I do. But you uh, may want to click on this AEM250 link at embarky.eng.edu. Uh, there's me from a couple of years ago. I click on that for AEM250 and go into class materials. Then for the current semester uh, that I teach, uh, and I'm actually not teaching an on-campus section this time, uh, but this might be from the summer. You can take a look at notes from the summer when I taught it. And these are just a, a different version of the similar notes that you have. Okay. Uh, here, fall 2018 syllabus, daily schedule and assignments. If you click on this, this is the format of the syllabus that, that I use uh, for my colleagues and for the on-campus students. So here's the date, 8:22, and uh, introduction to normal stress. And then these are the problems. Our exams are scheduled for 9:19, 10:17, and 11:28. Uh, and there will also be a final exam during final exam week. Now remember, those are the start date or the opening date of the exam. You'll have one week from those dates. And those are summarized down here. Now it says night exam because this is what I give to the on-campus students. Okay, so you can find that link here. Uh, if you want to come and visit me, here's directions to my office in CERC. Right now I have another office in a building called a Jim Comer. It may just be for the semester, but, but we'll see. Um, we have some course policies. We have frequently asked questions. And this, uh, I didn't see this on the Blackboard website. But this goes into great detail about what I expect to see when I grade problems for full credit and what are on the exams. Okay, so what should I do for any exam? Do these things. What should I be able to know for exam number one? Okay, and then here's a list of items that you should be able to do on exam number one. You can use this as a checklist. And if you understand that, you can move on to the next topic. If you don't understand something, you can go back and watch the videos. Again, ask me or the teaching assistant for help. Exam number two, exam number three, final exam. And then after this are 
some common problems and frequently asked questions. And so I'll let you read through these, but it has such things as run out of time when I take a test. What can I do about that? Uh, make sure you have studied enough to know what your solution procedures are so that you can apply the problems before you take the exam. If you have test anxiety or related concern, you can contact the Office of Disability Services. Okay, so uh, there's a special office here at the university that can handle documented cases of uh, medical needs and test anxiety, and, and you can contact them, and it's possible to get test accommodations such as additional time and so forth. So whatever accommodations they deem appropriate, then, then I will, I, through your proctor, will provide those accommodations. Okay, so I'll let you look at the frequently asked questions in more detail, but there's some other things here, how to be successful in mechanics and materials, uh, why doing your homework is important. We can click on that for a second. Okay, there's a lot of scatter in this, but what I have here is our course grade versus homework grade. Now, the homework is about 10% of the course, but you can see there's not a perfect correlation, but it generally tends to follow that if you get an A or a B on your homework, you're likely going to get an A or a B in the course. Okay, so doing this homework is, is really important. The test problems that I give will be different than the homework problems, but they will be hopefully similar in style and will cover the same content as our homework problems in the assigned reading. How to raise your letter, letter grade. Uh, that basically says do your homework. There's uh, Dr. Philpot, a different uh, professor at a different university, developed something called Mech Movies. You may click that link and see some 3D graphics illustrated for mechanics materials. He's made that available publicly. Uh, here are some detailed statics example problems that I have worked out. And here's an important one. This is examples of structures that may be on your exam one and other exams. Now this picture may move, may change. But that link will still be there. I will pick one of these three structures and include it on your exam. Now, when I say you pick one of these three structures, the load may be in a different direction, maybe up, maybe to the right. The structure may be in a different orientation. Maybe this bar is down below instead of up above. But each of these things with numbers by them are what are called two force members. And you should be able to find the forces in each of those two force members. Statics is so important in this class. I don't want to leave anybody behind if they're a little rusty on their statics. So I want to clue you in on some of the statics that I think is important for you to know. And one of those is to be able to find forces and two force members, from which you can then do the mechanics and materials part of the problem. All right, here's problem number one for exam number three. I think I'll talk about that in the video, so we won't go through that right now. Uh, here's a homework handout on combined loading. It should be available through integrity link, but if it's not, it's right here. Uh, and answers to odd numbered problems, the third edition of Craig. So in here is a zip file, and you can find the uh, answers out of the what we would usually call back of the book. There wasn't enough room in the back of the book in our edition, so they put this in a separate file that you can download to look at just the answers, not the solution, just the answers to the odd numbered problems. Okay, so there's a little bit more information here, but I think you'll find this, this useful. Again, the way to get to it is through my homepage, embarky.eng.ua.edu, and clicking on AEM 250 class materials. All right, so I think, let's see, I think that pretty much sums up my part of the course. Um, there's Blackboard help and there's contact technical support. You know, if the video isn't playing or something, then you can contact technical support. I really can't do anything about that. I've done my part to make sure everything is here. Uh, but if, if there's a computer problem or a technical problem with the delivery, then that's who you would contact. Well, let me just close off with saying, I, I hope you get a lot out of Mechanics Materials. Mechanics Materials is a class I'm passionate about. It's, um, it's a class I've taught many times, and I can say, in all honesty, when I was working as an engineer, everything that I teach you in this class is something that I needed to know 
be able to do on the job. And I think you will find that this is one of the valuable classes that you'll take if you're a mechanical, aerospace, civil engineering student, even metallurgical engineering. Uh, you can't have a material without, uh, for an engineering structure without having some loads on it. So all these things kind of go together. Um, so, so I hope you find this class useful and interesting. And I value your feedback. You'll get a chance at the end of the semester to provide feedback. Um, you can do that anonymously. You can also send me an email if you have something, uh, some comment. You know, uh, as I said, this is a new development. There's probably going to be some kinks or bugs in this that we need to work out. Let me know if there's any, any issues. Let me know if you think I should explain something more clearly. Let me know if you think I've done a good job. So I appreciate that kind of feedback. All right, well, with that, I'm going to uh, end this introduction to the shell video and uh, have a good semester and stay in touch.